Onward and upward, another weekend, another Q&A. And just so you know, I'm discerning the schedule for these Q&As. I wasn't sure if I'd have time to get this done today, but sure enough, some time opened up. So here we go, talking all about road running shoes. But just so you know, I'm thinking about moving the Q&A day uh, from Saturday to another day. Just putting it out there, uh, I'm thinking. Okay, all about road running shoes. Let's dive in. I'll get you the question of the day toward the end. And I got a lot of shoes around me, actually, some new shoes as well. Here in the studio, number one from Joseph. Let's go. Which ultra shoe would you wear for a road marathon? Thank you, Joseph, for that question. So actually, just opening it up, who out there has raced a marathon in an ultra shoe, which is a zero drop running shoe? I have never raced a marathon in a, in a zero drop shoe. Preferably, Joseph, for me, I like a higher drop shoe for marathons, at least eight millimeters, and I'm not afraid to go up to 10 millimeters. Uh, that's why I wore the 4% in Amsterdam. I really like a little bit of slope in a racing shoe for the road marathons. But if I, oh man, it's tough. So I was doing a little research, research for you, Joseph. The, uh, the Vanish R, I believe it's called, from Ultra, would probably be my first choice, even though the midsole does look a little lean. Uh, but then also the Torin 4, okay? Uh, a shoe that has plenty of midsole cushion, uh, but it's not really designed for racing. But then again, for a marathon race, and we're back. But then again, for a marathon race, I do uh, want a little more midsole protection for my feet especially. So, oh, sorry, Joseph, I'm just not... Uh, I'm not a zero drop guy for road racing, but I know plenty of people that do it. Okay, moving on. Number two from RJ. Hi, Seth. I've shelved my Asics Hyperspeed 7s from last year because it covered a lot of miles already. I love the shoe and have been planning to get another one like that. Do you think it's a perfect shoe for a marathon distance? That's from RJ. So RJ, you probably, maybe you saw this on the Asics website. They're discontinuing the Hyperspeed 7. I've never raced in the Hyperspeed 7. Uh, it looked like, just so you know, it looked like a pretty solid choice for a marathon. But then again, Asics is discontinuing that shoe. So you're probably looking for another one, RJ. And just so you know, I will be mentioning a lot more shoes in the next 10 to 15 minutes. That could be an option for you. So RJ, hang tight. Uh, we'll come back to that in one second. Sorry, the Hyperspeed 7 is being discontinued. That's too bad. Okay, moving on. Number three from Athlete in Training. Would you choose the Hoka Carbon X or the Zoom Fly 3 for a marathon race if you can't afford the Nike Next Percent? And this uh, theme came up quite a bit in the Q&A uh, from these questions from last week. Basically, people are realizing, wow, these next percents are expensive. And some other shoes out there on the market, like anything over $180 is a lot of money for a running shoe. So I get it, athlete in training, and I absolutely, I would probably choose the Carbon X over the Zoom Fly 3 if I was going between those two, two for a marathon race. I just... Um, I like the, I feel like the Carbon X, uh, well, first, yeah, I feel like the Carbon X has a little more pop to it, all right, through the gate cycle, through that foot strike. I think um, the, the rocker feel, the rocker approach, the, the geometric uh, shape of the midsole in the Carbon X from Hoka, actually, where is it? Here it is. Here we go. I feel like the geometric shape uh, that they put into the rocker feel of Hoka would be my go-to choice. Um, and I think the just the it's just a little a little more stiff, which means a little more pop through that foot strike. So, all right, athlete in training. I hope that helps. Uh, we'll put this back there just for a second. Okay, moving on to Luke. Uh, he's been watching the channel for a while. New studio looks great. Thank you, Luke. I agree. We're coming along. Not done yet. I'm still gonna work on some lighting in here, but yes, it is evolving. Uh, let's see. He says. He loves the way I'm using the green in here. Okay, nice. Uh, question. Marathon shoes are usually good to take down to half marathon distance, and 5K flats are good up to 10K distance. But those distances in the middle are difficult. What is the distance that draws the line between using flats and a marathon shoe? Is it 12K, 15K, 10 mile? Thank you, Luke, for that question. Does that make sense? So let's just say this is a racing flat the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro. And then I would say the Carbon X is definitely a marathon racing shoe or even further, like the 50K on the roads. So what is the distance where you draw the line? Oh man, it's an interesting question, Luke. I'm gonna say, hmm, 
I'm going to say it's right about 10 miles. All right. I would feel um, almost confident taking the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro up to 10 miles. It's really borderline. Uh, boy, that's a tough one, but I'm going to go with 10 miles. Thank you, Luke, for the question. And he's right. I think he's spot on. Like, those distances, and you don't usually race 12Ks and 15Ks very much, at least not here in the United States. So I think the topic, uh, the question is, hasn't really crossed my mind too much in the past, but I like the way you're thinking, Luke. So, all right, 10 miles is my answer. Moving on to Dundas 71. I'm planning to run my first marathon the 5th of April in Rotterdam. Congrats. What do you think about the Nike Turbo 2? Please, where is the Nike Turbo 2? There it is. Okay, we better keep replacing shoes here, though. Hold on, I'm going to put that back. Turbo 2. So I would say just be careful, done to 71. I would definitely try the shoe out ahead of time because I had major issues with the heel counter from 2019 where I actually was bleeding quite a bit when I wore I had to tape the back of my, my Achilles tendon almost every time I wore this shoe last summer and I actually I didn't even do I don't think I even did a full review did I do a full review because it, I don't think I even took it to 50 miles because it was digging into my heels so much so just be careful I'm not saying it would happen to everyone why it happened to me I don't know uh, I don't know I don't know maybe I should have gone a half size up I don't think so but I'm hoping that actually here's the turbo here's the turbo one here's the turbo two and I will I hope they add a little more cushion back to the heel counter from 2018 to 2019 to 2020 so 2020 whatever they come out for the turbo I hope they have a little more cushion in the heel counter done to 71 good question Richard asked how many miles do you recommend you have in your marathon racing shoes leading into the marathon race Richard I love this question I get it quite a bit and I always say I think I always say at least 10 miles probably no more than 20 miles so I don't I don't do too much maybe two runs probably no more than three runs in my marathon because I like to keep the shoes pretty fresh um, I like to keep that midsole nice and fresh not re not reduce any of that um, uh, basically no, no compression through that midsole foam so good question Richard 10 to 20 miles is uh, is the range that I say. Okay, moving on. Gabriel asks, what's the best marathon racing shoe if you're on a budget? Gabriel, once again, this theme of budget and pinching pennies, and I love it. I love the way you're thinking. So um, let's see. Actually, there was another question. Oh, this light is giving me a little trouble. I do apologize, everyone. I think it's uh, on its last leg, which means I'm going to have to ante up and... Uh, and get another another one soon. Hopefully it's not too dark in here. I'll stand a little closer. Okay, here we go. There was another one uh, about this. Yes, I think uh, I'll, I'll connect this question to E. White. So he asks, hey, Seth, Eric here from Central New York. Love the channel. Best running vlog on YouTube. Thank you. I appreciate it, Eric. My question is for the marathon distance. If there was no Nike Next Percent or 4% or carbon plate racing shoes, what would be your number one pick for marathon road racing today? So this is going to connect back Back to Gabriel, if I was on a budget, I would go with the Adidas Boston or the Audios 4 or 5. The 5 is now out. Here's the Audios 4. Ooh, where is the 5? I think I left it inside. Sorry about that. Um, I believe the 4 is around $90 right now. Don't quote me on that. The Audios 4. And then the Boston... I think it's the Boston 4. Oh, man. It's around there as well. Sorry I'm not remembering the prices exactly, but either the Adidas Boston or the Adidas Audios um, 4. So the 5 is the brand new iteration, which I have, but I have not raced in it yet or, or even trained in it, so I can't really give you my opinions on that shoe. Good question from Eric and Gabriel, but those would be my two go-to shoes if there was no carbon fiber plates out there on the marketplace at this point. At this point. Ooh, I'll come to that in a second. All right, let's move on. We got a lot of questions here. Good questions rolling in. Okay, let me make sure I don't miss any. From Christopher, road racing shoes, what is better? Oh, uh, this is interesting. What is better, light with little cushion or heavier with lots of cushion? I have many and love my Brooks. The Dyad, Ravenna, and Transcend are my workout shoes. The Asteria are racing, but I have a hard time imagining my feet making a full marathon. Keeping in the Brooks lineup, flat feet, what is your pick? I am leaning towards the Dyad for Chicago. Christopher, I completely agree. Now, Christopher, I, I have I've raced and trained very little in Brooks. But I did a little research, and based on what I saw on the Brooks website, it did appear that the Dyad, if I'm saying that right, is the best option for 
your Chicago Marathon. And uh, let's see, what else were you saying? Yes, the Asteria definitely, it's kind of back to that whole thought of how far can you take a racing flat like how far and depending on which what iteration but i say 10 miles is about as much as my legs could take at higher speeds i'm going to mention a shoe here that might be another option though here in a second so good question from christopher moving on to aaron uh are they going to release the alpha fly to the public the nike alpha fly which is what kipchoge wore for the ineos 159 challenge aaron Absolutely. I guarantee they release it because they are going to make a lot of money. Nike's going to make a lot of money with that shoe because, oh man, it's uh, the stack height is ridiculous. I think it's 50 millimeters in the heel. 50. So, and Aaron, as you know, there's a little bit of a controversy out there about uh, carbon fiber plate shoes in general, specifically when they're paired with uh, very tall stack heights. And this connects to the previous question about what is better, light with little cushion or heavier with lots of cushion. So for marathons, we're discovering right now that lots of cushion is good while still keeping the shoe very lightweight. And that's what Nike was able to pull off with the 4% originally, the 4, <laughs> the 4% originally. Uh, so Aaron, yes, uh, it will be released to the public because they're going to sell a lot of them. Moving on to uh, Javier. For race shoes, I own the Rincon and just got the Beacon V1, not used yet. In your experience, which one do you think can do better at a marathon distance? So, good question. Here we go. Rock and roll time. Butter my bread. The Rincon Javier, 100% lightweight. Um, pop. I remember, I had to think for a second, is it with a snap or pop? This shoe had some nice pop last summer when I was running in it. Uh, yeah, I loved the Rincon. I'm not running in it anymore, but I would I would definitely r race in this shoe for a marathon. I, I th in fact, I think it's a decent option for, now that I'm remembering, I think it's a decent option for a more affordable marathon racing shoe. Even though I put it in the training category more so, I think this is not bad. So Javier, good question. I'm glad you brought it up. I wouldn't wear the Beacon. Um, I think the Beacon, I know people that have raced a marathon in it, but oh man, I would pick the, the Rincon over the Beacon. I'll leave it there, Javier, because I got a lot to get to. But yeah, good question. I love the Rincon. Good, good, good shoe from 2019. Moving on to, I already answered that one. Here we go. Patrick, I am 19 years old. Uh, in college, I am training for a, the half marathon and further distances. What is a solid racing shoe that you can recommend that is as cheap as possible? Ah, back to that pinching pennies. I love it. I love how we're thinking here, everyone. So, um, half marathon and further. I said, Patrick, the Saucony Fast Twitch 9. The 8, the 8, the 8 is a little firm through that midsole. Not quite enough midsole foam. But the 9 has a little more midsole protection, and it's cheap. I think it's under $100 right now, the Fast Twitch 9 from Saucony. I think it would do the trick. And definitely for the half marathon, you might be pushing it a little bit for the marathon, but the Saucony Fast Twitch 9, look it up, Patrick. And then, yes, now I haven't run in it yet, the Adidas Adi Zero RC2. Look at it. Oh, I'm excited. Once again, probably more of a half marathon shoe, but I think you could I think you could take it up to the marathon, especially if your legs are resilient and they can handle your 19. So I bet you can handle a little more pounding in your legs uh, on the pavement. So there it is. I haven't run in it yet though, but I can just tell by holding in it, this would be solid for the half marathon and marathon distance. And again, I believe it's under $100. Yes, it's under $100. I'm not exactly sure on the price. Moving on, William. Hey, Seth, do you think carbon plate shoes have that much impact on the average runner over a long distance compared to a more traditional racing flat? That's from William. Um, William, depends on the distance you're racing, but I do think so. I think that any carbon fiber plate shoe is going to help basically anyone. As long as you're, even if, as long as you're not like running... 14 minutes a mile or 15 minutes a mile like then yeah the the benefit might but i think any any pace i think the carbon fiber plate's going to give you a little extra oomph through the gate cycle so william yes i do i i really do uh moving on Teeth cuber i have the nike peg 35s there they are whoa 
Nike Peg 35s, and I love them. I kind of want something a little more bouncy. What pair of shoes should I get next? TV Cuber. The immediate thought was the Clifton 6. I don't own the Clifton 6, but I've held it in a running shoe store, and a lot of people say they love it for their easy days. So the Hoka Clifton 6, definitely, uh, definitely. Okay, we're running. I got to remember to keep putting shoes back because I'm getting, making a mess in here. Uh, there it is. The Skechers Max Road 4, 100%. More, you said more bouncy. This is your shoe. This is your shoe. And then a new shoe that I left inside, but the Asics Gel Nimbus Light. The A6 Gel Nimbus Light. It felt kind of bouncy yesterday when I took it out for my first impression run. So those would be my three right now. Clifton 6, Skechers Max Road 4, and A6 Gel Nimbus Light. Good question from the TV Cuber. All right, moving on to Garth. Hi, Seth. Longtime follower of yours and love seeing the progress you have made on this YouTube channel. Thank you, Garth. I, I know you, Garth. I think Garth might be from Australia. If I am remembering, don't quote me on that. I am right now in need of a new marathon shoe and i'm really interested in a couple the carbon x or the nike zoom fly 3 which would you recommend he's 62 kilograms is his weight i bet he is from australia if he's putting his his weight in, in kilograms i actually what is that in pounds anyway um and have a marathon pb of three hours and 55 minutes congrats garth all right carbon x unfortunately i did not bring it into the studio sadly it's in the house okay I would go back, whoop, I guess I kind of already <laughs> answered this. I would go with a Carbon X. Um, and, you know, you weigh 62 ki uh, kilograms, uh, ki kilos, I guess I should say. Uh, yes, the Carbon X, uh, I, I think I already answered this earlier. But let me try and dive a little bit more into it. Um, the other reason I like it for the marathon is it feels, compared to the Zoomfly 3, a little more garth a little more stable it's a wider platform so if you don't want to have to think at all about your foot strike and you're just running 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 one foot in front of the other for 26.2 miles um I, I mean the zoom fly three it's just a little more narrow i'm not saying you have to overthink your foot strike in that but for the marathon distance the less you have to think about the better and especially when you get tired you're just plodding along and you're like, get me done. I those last six miles. You're like, okay, this is starting to hurt. So the less, the less mental energy you have to expend, I think the better. And I think the Carbon X is just a nice, um, smooth, easy landing through the, through, through your foot strike. So Garth, that would be my answer. Once again, uh, hope that helps. Okay. Moving on. This is a road running shoe q and a but we did sneak one in for the track from derek uh he's got a daughter doing track soon you think uh do i think the audi zero audios lineup or the zoom fly lineup from nike would be okay for the 1500 and 3k racing she's hesitant to use spikes because an upper classmate said she didn't care for them she used um she used the four percents for the same events so that's really interesting oh actually this is crazy i cannot imagine showing up to a high school track meet in 2020 and seeing kids run around the track in some four percents or some next percents or even some who knows maybe some carbon x's it's very foreign to me in high school I don't have my track spikes from high school anymore. Sadly, keep your track spikes, high, track spikes, high schoolers. You'll you'll want to relish them someday. Um, we wore spikes, and I'm a big fan of spikes. Uh, they, I think they do make you run faster. First of all, they're very lightweight, Derek. Um, I think they're they're a good. I think spikes are solid, especially if you can stay healthy. And I think you honestly will run a little bit faster, especially for the 1500 meters, okay? I would lean towards spikes for the 15. For the 3K, which is interesting that uh, the high school is doing a 3K, I guess maybe it's a 3200 perhaps. Um, I, and, she, and if your daughter does not want to wear spikes, I get it. So once again, I, had, I did a little research for you. So that's Saucony Type A8. Saucony Type A8 on clearance right now from Running Warehouse. If I remember Derek, I will remember to link to him down below. And then also the Nike Zoom uh, Streak LT4, also on clearance right now from Running Warehouse, link down below. And then last but not least, if you really want to splurge Derek, these are also on clearance, but they're still I, they brand new, uh, 250 bucks. I think they're around 180 or 190 right now, once again, from Running Warehouse, the Reebok Float Ride 
run fast pros the lightest shoe on the market that i know of 3.1 ounces i would love derek and your daughter i would i would do anything to run a mile or a two mile i would even run an 800 meter in this shoe uh i a hundred percent i love this shoe i only raced in it once in 2019 got the w in this shoe in a five i wore it for a 5k on the roads and so anyway i love this shoe love this shoe anyway all three are linked down below thank you for listening that's all the q a all right question of the day here we go for next week which i'm actually going to pull the questions from facebook so my facebook page if you haven't followed it yet it's down below so I'm going to post this question on Facebook for next week's Q&A, all right? So it's going to be all about question of the day. What questions do you have for me all about ultra or trail racing? Ultra or trail racing, it's only January, but guess what? March, it, I can smell March. It's on the horizon, which means trail running is going to be back on the docket for many of us sooner rather than later i want to get the conversation going about trail and ultra running so facebook page if you have the question it is down below thanks for being here thanks for watching you guys rock and yes we're gonna throw it back to on the right last week's q a of course uh what was it about it was about marathon racing yes marathon racing that'll be on the right or marathon training i should say on the right and then on the left we'll throw it back to the q a playlist video. All right, everyone. You guys rock. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.